Our next speaker, Salome Erickson, is the winner of the Student Best Paper Award. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. So this is joint work with um, Gabi Röger and Malte Helmert. As we have just heard, um, it is quite nice if we can validate what our planner actually tells us, and this is also true for any kind of software. So it can always, what we probably all know very well, it can always happen that we have bugs in the software, but we can also have hardware faults or maybe even our software tells us something wrong for malicious reasons. So how can we verify that our output is actually correct? For classical planners, if it outputs a plan, it's rather easy to verify that. You just apply the plan to the initial state, see if you end up in a goal state. So this we have already tools for that, um, namely val and inval. But what about if the planner says, well, this problem is unsolvable. Currently, it, it doesn't tell you any reason why. So this was basically the goal of our paper. We wanted to define a form of unsolvability certificates that a planner can actually generate and that can also be um, verified by an independent piece of software. And ideally we would like to have these certificates certain, um, to have certain properties. So we would like them to be sound and complete, meaning that if the plan is unsolvable, uh, if the task is unsolvable and only then there actually exists such a certificate, we would like those certificates to be efficiently generated so it doesn't produce a too big overhead for our planner while it's searching for a plan. Uh, we would like them to be efficiently verified, at least in the size of the certificate, and we would like them to be as general as possible so we can use these certificates for a wide area of planning techniques. Now, how do we actually create such certificates? If we look at the search space, um, it is kind of easy to see when, uh, when a, uh, a task is unsolvable. And that is exactly when there is just no path from the initial state to any goal state. When that happens, then we can actually split our search space into two parts. One part contains the initial state, the other part contains all the goal state, and there is no transition from the part with the initial state to the part with the goal state. So this here is one example. Usually there are several ways how you can do this. This would be another way. But basically the, the important thing is like you can build a set where the initial state is in, where you can't get out. Doesn't matter if you can get in from outside, but you can't get out. So that is what we use as unsolvability certificates. Here are some definitions. First of all, we say uh, we define an inductive set, and that is basically this property of not getting out. So if we have a state set, um, and for all states in this set, if we apply any action, we're still in that set, then we call the set inductive. And now we can say uh, as, um, a task is unsolvable if we find such a state set that contains the initial state, contains no goal states, and is inductive. Now, of course, we're talking about very large state sets usually because the state space is exponential. So we have the problem on how can we represent them efficiently. And we chose to use logical formulas and more concretely we are focusing on these representation, BDDs, 2CNF formulas and horn clauses. Although we have in the paper also a bit more general criteria on which type of representations actually work. Now, of course, we have also the problem that not all state sets are compactly representable in these formalisms. Um, but what can happen is that sometimes we can implicitly define them as a union or an intersection of several state sets. So that is what we call conjunctive or disjunctive certificates. If we have a set of state sets and their union or their intersection forms an inductive certificate. But there's one big problem with that. Um, if we have that, usually we cannot efficiently verify whether the state set is actually an inductive certificate because then we just need to explicitly build this union and interse or intersection again and we lost all the advantage. So we came up with one more type of certificates which we call R-conjunctive or R-disjunctive certificates where the basic, basically the idea is that during the verification we need always only to build an explicit union or intersection of up to 
R sets at once. So, for example, only two sets at once. Um, I will not go into the details here. I will just um, show some results for which types of certificates, which um, representations are suitable. So, uh, if we have an inductive certificate, so we have just one formula describing the entire state set, all of our formalisms work very well. For a conjunctive certificate, BDDs don't work that well anymore because they don't cover um, unbounded conjunction. Two CNF and horn clauses still work, but that's, then you can basically just build an inductive certificate because the conjunction of two um, horn clauses is just not a horn clause. And for our conjunctive certificates, all formalisms are again um, usable because bounded conjunction um, is something you can do with BDDs. Now, for disjunctive certificates, none of our formalisms can actually um, support them efficiently. If we look at our disjunctive, then BDDs work again because of the same argument with bounded con conjunction or disjunction. But one interesting result is also that if, if we have one disjunctive certificate, so if we never actually need to build a union of these several state sets, then we can again use all representations. Okay, so let's see how this idea of uh, inductive certificates works for different planning techniques. First of all, let's have a look at blind search. So if we do blind search, we have kind of like three options. We can do progression search, regression search, or bidirectional search. If we look at what happens in progression, um, if the task is unsolvable, then a blind search will just find all the states that are reachable from the initial state. And if it's unsolvable, obviously it contains no goal states, the initial state is in it. And since we are looking at all the states reachable from I, there is it is also inductive because, um, yeah, else we could reach something more. So for regression, the states we are looking at are the ones that are backwards reachable from the goal or from where the goal is reachable. Um, and here what we can actually do is that we just take the complement of this state set and this is also an inductive certificate because it's the complement, it contains the initial state and contains no goal state and backwards reachable basically means you can't get in so from the complement you can't get out. So this is also an inductive certificate. For bidirectional search, since this is basically just an iteration of different progression and regression phase, Either prog a progression phase or a regression sh phase shows unsolvability and then we can just use the appropriate technique here. Next, let's look, um, I am sorry, um, and at least for symbolic search, BDDs are very suitable because they are already used for symbolic search. Explicit state forward search, we could also use BDDs. Regression with partial states, their BDDs wouldn't be suitable anymore. Next, let's have a look at some heuristics and first just consider the case where the initial state is actually considered a dead end from the heuristic. So for merchant shrink heuristics, we have that if we take all the states where merchant shrink says this is a dead end and build a union of these states, this is an inductive set and obviously contains no goal states because it is an admissible heuristic. So if the initial state is deemed a dead end by merchant shrink, then this is an inductive certificate. And we can efficiently represent this as BDD, but only for linear merge strategies. Because for those, we can actually represent the cascading tables which merchant shrink uses. We can represent those as an ADD, and then just basically co-join all the finite age leaves. And this is then the false um, end of the BDD and the infinite leaf is the true end. Now for the lead relaxation heuristics, if, we, um, if a state is deemed um, a dead end from the delete relaxation heuristic, then basically part of the goal is unreachable. And if we now consider all the um, variables that are relaxed unreachable, um, then we can build this formula here, which is basically just saying at least uh, all of the unreachable variables are false. So this is basically, this represents all state sets where all the unreachable variables are false. 
then this obviously contains no goal states because at least one goal variable needs to be in there. And it is also inductive because all the variables are relaxed unreachable. And again, if the initial state is deemed as a dead end, then this is actually an inductive certificate. This approach covers all the delete relaxation heuristics and we can actually use any representation that we focus on um, <coughs> to represent the certificate. Now, just a quick look at the HM family. Uh, the idea is very similar there, just that we need to consider unreachable conjunctions rather than um, just atoms. And then the formula looks like this. And this is a horn clause or 2CNF formula, but we cannot anymore represent them as one BDD compactly. It's basically like you cannot represent all mutexes um, compactly in one BDD. But you can just take the, like these here, these disjunctions, and build um, several BDDs with just these disjunctions and then use it as a one conjunctive certificate. Uh, so far, I only talked about what happens if the initial state is deemed a dead end by the heuristic. But that's usually not what happens during general search. Usually you expand a couple of states, you find dead ends here and there. So how can we build a certificate there? Basically, what we can observe is that just all the considered states is not yet a certificate, because if you have a dead end, there are states reachable after that dead end, which you're not looking at. But if you have a dead end, then you can, with the techniques I described before, you can build an inductive set, and then you can just take all these inductive sets covering the dead ends, and all the expanded states, and the union of this is a certificate. Now, in general, building this union is, again, infeasible, but what we can do is if each expanded state is in its own set, we actually have a one disjunctive certificate. If we take like each dead end inductive set and each expanded state as its own set. And here we can, again, use BDD's horn clauses and 2CNF. However, there are some limitations here. So first of all, all the sets that we have in here must have the same representation. So if you have two heuristics that use different representations, this approach cannot cover this yet. And also, you cannot, for example, if you would use the H2 heuristics and BDDs, then the dead-end sets would actually be one conjunctive set. So you don't have a, like a single BDD for those. And that would also not work in combination with this. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about Trapper, which was recently introduced by Nirli Palavetsky at Ali. Um, Trapper is basically building a trap formula with no escape. So if your state satisfies this formula, you can't get out of this. All successors will also satisfy it. So this is basically also a, a form of inductive set. Um, <coughs> And also, the Trapper formula contains no goal states, but only in the states that it considers, because it only considers states that do not violate any mutexes, which are calculated by, by a preprocessing from the H2 heuristic. Now, alone, this um, trap formula is not a certificate, because it does not consider all the possible states. But what we can see is that if we take um, the set of all states not violating mutexes, this is actually also an inductive set, because if you're not violating a mutex, your successors will not do that either. So we can build a formula with these states and um, combine it with the trap formula, and this forms again an inductive certificate. And if we um, rearrange the formula a little bit, um, then we can even show that it is a one disjunctive formula. And here, two CNF and horn clauses are suitable representations. Okay. Um, I just, to conclude, I just quickly want to talk about a proof of concept imp implementation we did. So we implemented a certifying version of FAST downward, downward, which can actually generate BDD certificates for a star search with HMAX or the merchant shrink heuristic. And we also implemented a verifier which can verify vanilla, R conjunctive, and R disjunctive BDD certificates. Um, we did some experiments on these limits, R 30 minutes for generation, and a little bit more generous limit of four hours for the verification. 
And what we see here, basically, this is fast downward without generating a certificate. Um, this is with creating a certificate. And we see, well, in a, at least more than half the cases, it could create a certificate with the same time limit. And also, in most cases, it could actually also verify this certificate um, in, ta in the given limits. And of course, the most important result, all the certificates are actually valid. So, to conclude, um, we presented in our paper unsolvability certificates, which are based on inductive sets. They are complete. There exists such an inductive set if um, the task is unsolvable. They can be efficiently generated in some cases that I presented here. They can also be efficiently verif verified if they can be efficiently generated. And they do cover already quite some approaches, but of course there is still a lot to do. We would like to cover more techniques in the future, such as different heuristics or pruning techniques. And we would also like to take a look at combining certificates which use different representations. Thank you very much. Well, we didn't look too much into what the certificates actually said because they tended to become very big. So that, yeah, uh, several gigabytes at points. So, um, but I can imagine, for example, if you have a Sokoban task where the block is in the corner, then your certificate will basically just tell you, well, as soon as the block is in the corner, you're not getting out of this. And it can ignore all the other variables. So I imagine that Depending on the technique, it, it can tell you something, but probably it will basically just tell you the reasoning of the heuristics if you use one. For blind search, maybe it, it can really tell you something that you didn't see before yet. Yeah, so, so this, uh, so this uh, you don't put any requirement on, on the definition, right, of a certificate about how difficult it is to verify that. Um, well, we want it to be able um, to be verified polynomial, so with the approaches, that is what we basically say if it's efficiently verified. In the paper we put actually some more formal definitions like if the formalism supports um, the model operation and unbounded conjunction and whatnot, then it can be verified efficiently. Yeah, so, so the mm -hmm. question is, uh, uh, so right now uh, what you presented, there is no such requirement, right, on the inductive set. So you know, there is no requirement mm -hmm. about how difficult it is to verify that, or even the size, right, of the of the certificate as a function of the size of the problem, right? So yeah, not really. Um, what what usually happens, especially since we represent each and every expanded state in its own formula, um, we have from the size of the problem or yeah, from the formula, from the PDDL size, it can blow up exponentially. It will only crea create a polynomial overhead for the planner. Yeah, I mean, so. at the end mm -hmm. of the day, if you have like a, a mm -hmm. planner that reports on solvability and produces certificate, right? Mm -hmm. You would like to, to test that the planner is giving a right answer in polynomial mm -hmm. time, right? It's n mm -hmm. of not much use a certificate that cannot be tested. It can. We have that. We have that. It can be tested basically in polynomial in the, uh, in the size of the certificate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but empirical results, so if you mm -hmm. can just go back to the Yeah. So in HMAX, it looks here like you lose a lot of performance, but am I getting it right if you assign the whole runtime to both the search and producing a like yeah, exactly. It's basically the same limit. So FD cert has basically the additional overhead to create the certificate um, in the so same time. That that could be done. Yeah, the the problem there is basically it probably would in, induce maybe even a bit more of an overhead because you need to go over all the states again. But it could also be done. Okay. I'm just curious, like, how many certificates you can produce if you don't take into account the time already consumed by the search. So yeah, the, that is true. That's something we didn't look into yet. It's time to move on. Is our fourth speaker here? <laughs> 